We're at a chatbots meetup, and I'm pretty sure that most of you here are builders, are, are like people who want to build new things. So I built Bus Uncle. How many of you here has heard of Bus Uncle? Okay, quite a fair bit of you. Uh, so because we're all builders, I wanted to uh, direct this pre presentation in the form of the making of Bus Uncle so that I hope you guys could get uh, a better idea of like what you can use to build your own bot. So an introduction to myself. Uh, I'm an SMU graduate. I'm currently a software engineer at Trade Gecko. Uh, Trade Gecko is one of the most talented uh, companies, startups in Singapore. I've learned so much from all my colleagues. Uh, a few things about me is I live on music. Uh, I love playing the drums and the guitar, and I love animations as well. Uh, so yeah, that's a little introduction about me. So how it all started was back in uh, October 2016, I was at a bus stop. And at this bus stop, I saw a lot of people over there just standing and looking to the right and waiting for their bus. So all these guys really had like nothing to do. They're all just standing and waiting. And some of them are on their phones and their apps just waiting for their bus. But basically, you, you can see in generally, most people just keep turning their heads right and wonder where their bus is. They have all these questions. Uh, I, I've been waiting all day. I need to shop. So the thing is, when you're waiting for your bus, you would like to know how long you'd have to wait for your bus. So that gives you a better idea and makes you feel better about having to stand there a little longer. If you didn't know, if, if you had to wait, for example, 20 plus minutes and you didn't know uh, you actually had to wait 20 minutes, you could have told yourself later, hey, actually, I could have just gone, gotten, gotten a cup of coffee and come back. Now I wasted my time. So you want to know how long you wanna, uh, your bus will arrive. So Singapore has developed uh, all these information boards everywhere that do help people uh, know how long it takes to find their bus. But one problem here is there's too much information. Uh, it shows you the waiting times for every bus. It shows you the waiting time for the next bus as well. And this board even refreshes after almost like every 5, 10 seconds. It's just way too much information. So apps also have tried to solve this problem. Apps. There's some apps out there that, that have these user interfaces where uh, they show you a list of all buses at your bus stop, or they show you like a list of all bus stops around you on a map. And what I noticed about these apps uh, when I was standing there was uh, even these apps have too much information. You have to do a fair bit of scrolling to actually find your bus. You have to go to a search bar and type where you are. Uh, or even if you click on the map icon, uh, you, you won't exactly know which bus you're at right then. You'll, you'll be shown a list of bus stops around there, then you'll have, you'll have to click something. There's a fair bit of thinking and a fair bit of acting involved here. But the thing is, I didn't actually want to do all that. I just wanted to know seven minutes. So imagine you're just standing there at the bus stop, and you just ask someone, how long will my bus arrive? Someone tells you, seven minutes, that's it. That's all you need to know. So then I thought this was a perfect opportunity to build something that could answer a question I have. I could ask something a question, and it could give me an answer. I realized that I could build Bus Uncle. So if you guys have, haven't tried out Bus Uncle, please visit this link, m.me slash sgbusuncle on your phones right now. And you can, give a, and you can go try, out, try talking to the app. So basically, to give you an idea of what Bus Uncle does, is you can start a conversation by saying hello. Then Bus Uncle will be like, ah. And then you can ask Bus how long. Bus Uncle will ask, where are you? You give your location. You can say you were at Maple Tree. And Bus Uncle automatically knows that, OK, that's a location. And he'll show you a list of all bus stops over there. You just have to choose which bus stop you're at. When you're, after you've chosen your bus stop, you, he'll show you all the buses that go there. Then you just choose your bus. And as soon as you uh, choose your bus, he'll tell you something like, 10 minutes, go get groceries. So this is actually one of the longer ways of speaking with Bus Uncle. Uh, now you can actually chat with Bus Uncle and tell him the bus you're at, the bus stop you're at. All of it in one message, and he'll give you the one answer that you want to know. 
So that's basically bus uncle. And uh, let's see how to build a bot. So normally when you think about building a bot, you think about, oh, you have to learn machine learning. You have to master your linguistics. You have to know like uh, how people speak, all the different kinds of languages they speak. And you have to practice all your algorithms, right? You have, because it's a very complex subject. Um, not many people have done it before, so it's so much. So it's a lot. It's a lot more complex than it looks. But actually, it's not. When you build a chatbot, you don't have to do any of this yourself because there's a lot of services out there that actually help you do all these things for you. So there's a lot of different ways to build a chatbot, but um, in my opinion, there are three main parts to it. The first part is you need some kind of machine learning library or a machine learning platform. So the more common ones out there are wit.ai and api.ai. These are websites that actually help you uh, parse the language you speak to a bot into actionable objects. So basically, when you're a coder, it, it allows you to uh, read natural language and output uh, pieces of data that you can use in, in, in the different parts of your app. Machine learning platform is required. The second platform you'd need would be a messaging platform. So the most common ones out there right now which support bots is Facebook Messenger, Slack, Telegram. There are some others also, Line, Kick, but these are just some examples. You have to choose one platform. And finally, you need a web server. So every bot in the background is actually just a web server. Um, the, the three examples here are Heroku, uh, AWS, Amazon Web Services, and Microsoft Azure. So you just have to choose one. And that's it. That's all you need to build a chatbot. You need to have a messaging platform, a web server, and a machine learning library. So basically, whenever anyone talks to your chatbot, it goes through this process. The user talks to the messaging platform, goes to a, it hits the web server, and the web server talks to, uh, hits the machine learning. And it all comes back all the way back to the user with a proper response for the user. So Bus Uncle was built this way. The platform I chose for Bus Uncle was Facebook Messenger. The web server I chose was Heroku as well. Uh, it was on the free plan as well. Um, and the machine learning platform I used was wit.ai. And my Heroku web server was, was based on Node.js with Express. So the thing is, uh, because Bus Uncle actually gets you real-time data, and I had a web server, I could use the web server to talk to LTA. LTA provides an API to give you like bus arrival timing data. So yeah, this was what Bus Uncle looked like in day one. But uh, this was when I released it in October, 20, October 26, 2016. And as soon as I released it on my Facebook profile, um, the number of users grew very slowly. Uh, firstly, it was just my friends who started talking to the bot. Uh, and then they started sharing it with their friends. They started liking the post, and it started get, getting shared more and more and more. So the number of users grew about maybe 20 to 40 per day for the first three or four days. Then on the fifth day, it got featured on mothership.sg. So mothership.sg actually had like covered uh, Bus Uncle without even contacting me. <laughs> and on the day that mothership.sg had featured Bus Uncle, Bus Uncle's page had gone from 200 likes to 8,000 likes in four hours. So this meant that all these users were actually trying to talk to Bus Uncle. And on that day, I remember getting 50 to 60 people speaking to Bus Uncle in the same second. That was horrible. <laughs> because I was on the free plan. I could <laughs> it, it, just had, it just kept crashing. So it kept crashing. And uh, my colleagues are here. They, they saw me struggling. Uh, like with bus uncle servers that were crashing. And when it was crashing, I didn't want like, the users to feel like they couldn't talk to bus uncle anymore, so I had to just keep going to my Heroku web console and, and click the restart button. <laughs> Every 10 minutes, I'd go back to the Heroku web console and click restart, restart, restart. So I knew I couldn't do this. Oh. I knew I couldn't keep hitting restart forever. So eventually, I had to build a more com complicated architecture for bus uncle. Um, from day one until day 30, it was a really fun adventure for me to actually learn about the different things I could do with the architecture of a chatbot. 
And on day 30, Bas Uncle looked something like this. Um, so I, don't, I won't ex actually explain the whole thing to you. But uh, what I did mainly here was I introduced database instances. So Bas Uncle started, uh, was connected to Redis. Redis is an in-memory database. And it was also connected to Mongo. And Redis was used to store uh, user conversations. It was, stored, it was used to store context of conversations. And the Mongo was used to cache uh, bus arrival timings, cache bus stops, and, and things like that. Um, and also, I started, I started tracking users a lot more. This is very important. Um, Heroku Web Server was start speaking to Facebook Analytics. Facebook Analytics is actually something that Facebook had introduced for their bots very recently as well, maybe two or three months ago. And basically what I did with Facebook Analytics was almost everything the users spoke to BusUncle, or almost every flow that went through in BusUncle, I tracked it. Like I had to know how many users were doing one thing as opposed to something else. I had to know how many users were uh, getting errors as, as opposed to actually being able to fulfill the, their conversation. So I started connecting to Facebook Analytics. Uh, Google Maps, I, I added new features, uh, like street view of bus stops, et cetera. So Bus Uncle is connected a lot more. And even on my Heroku web server, um, because I started getting a lot more requests now, I couldn't use JavaScript the way JavaScript normally works. So I, there's, I had to do a lot of uh, load balancing and a lot of parallel processing. And I really thank async.js, the library, that it, it really helped me to do that. And uh, because now I had a lot more users to take care of, I had a lot more users that I had to make sure uh, I had to keep satisfied. Uh, I, I wanted to ensure like I wrote quality software. So I had to bring some, some kind of testing framework into my bot. Uh, there's no proper bot testing framework out there just yet, so I had to code my own. I did it with Mocha, Chai, and Sinon. And I also did some application uh, performance tracking with New Relic and Paper Trail. So to give you an idea, or to give you my opinion of why it went viral, was because mainly Bus Uncle has a very strong personality. So most chatbots you see out there don't really have a personality. I, I realized when I was building Bus Uncle what, that I'm actually building someone you're talking to. That means I'm actually kind of building a human being in the background. So I didn't want this human being to just say something like, OK, next. What would you like next? OK, cool. I, I wanted this person to actually like be someone interesting, who, someone who would tell you jokes, uh, someone who would like curse at you. Uh, so. So bus, I had to give Bus Uncle a strong personality because it just felt right. Another thing is it's a nonlinear conversational flow. I recently read an article. It's, uh, there's another word for this. It's called uh, random access navigation. Um, this means when, whenever users speak to a chatbot, um, normally you'd think they'd have to go from point A in a conversation to, to point B in a conversation. So they have to start with one input. The bot will ask them, OK, I got A. Now what would you like, B or C? User clicks B. OK, I got B. Now what would you like, a D or E? That's a very linear flow. But Bus Uncle, on the other hand, is random access navigation. That means he, he won't ask you which bus you're at. He won't ask you, I mean, he won't ask you which bus you want. He, uh, he'll ask you your, the location you're at. But you can also just give him the bus that you're looking for. Um, you can also send him your postal code. You can send him your location through the Facebook Messenger location uh, uh, button. And you can start a conversation any way you want, and he will understand. And he will guide, he will guide you into, giving you all, into getting all the other inputs in other ways. So that's a nonlinear conversation flow. And finally, why, uh, the final point is um, Bus Uncle gives you answers. You have questions, and you know you can't answer them without like opening up an app or going to a website. He gives you the answers you want to know. So that's my opinion of why it went viral. So currently, the statistics of Bus Uncle are there are 16.8 thousand unique users. Um, 
the page has are almost 22,000, so I'm not sure where the, what the others, other users are doing. Um, so far, it has processed about 1.8 million messages for after it's been launched for about three and a half months. And the average number of messages per user is 107. That means users are really engaged with Bus Uncle. They just keep talking and talking and talking to Bus Uncle. So this is a little chart of the number of messages of Bus Uncle. So when I released it in October, on the first day, it was five messages. That was probably like me, my mother, and, and my friends. Um, a month in, 20, uh, 215, 7,000. And mid-January, it's about 1.4 million. So it just kept, kept going up. So that's some statistics. And a lot of people ask me about what's the business potential here. So I've, I've been thinking of different ways I could monetize this. Um, one way I'm doing it is by referral advertisements. So if you guys had used Bus Uncle recently, maybe last two, two weeks ago, you notice that Bus Uncle st uh, started speaking for BBC for some reason. So uh, Bus Uncle actually told users, check, wait, check out for these, I mean, check out these BBC buses, some buses with the BBC player splatted on top of the buses, and you should go download BBC. So that's one way I was advertising. I was helping advertisers. Um, other things I'm currently doing right now is content partnerships and transport partnerships. So these are still in the process of being made, but uh, basically that will add to the business as well. So one thing about Bus Uncle is that Bus Uncle is and will always be a product. People ask me, um, oh, you've made Bus Uncle. Are you going to make Bus Auntie now? Or are you going to make uh, MRT Auntie now? Um, so they ask me, they basically ask me, are you just going to be building a lot of other, other products? Are you, you going to be uh, a kind of a consultant to build all these different bots for other people? Then I sat down and thought about it, and I thought, um, maybe, but what really excited me is the potential of what Bus Uncle has. And I feel that Bus Uncle won't change from a product. It's, he's just going to be a product. Yeah, so that's the end of the, my presentation. That's something that Bus Uncle always says when, once you say thank you to Bus Uncle. So please like my page here, uh, facebook.com slash sgbusuncle. Uh, or you can also add me on LinkedIn here or my Facebook. Yep, thank you. Yeah, so we've got a bit more time. Maybe we can take one or two questions. Anyone got any questions for Abhi? Okay, have have. Yeah. Uh, gentlemen. Thank you for your presentation. Sure. Uh, you said you used machine learning for your bot. Could you elaborate a bit more how you use machine learning, how you trend it with the data? So in the start, uh, when you use wit.ai, you're, 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 taking to, you're taking through wit.ai's uh, way of creating a machine learning model. So how wit.ai does it is they ask you to make a story. And in a story, you specify something a user might say. And uh, you have to specify what the user's intention was with what they were trying to say. And they also allow you to highlight keywords in, in what the user said. So you can specify these keywords as entities. So if you're more into bots, you've noticed, that, uh, you've noticed the words intents and entities being used in almost every bot platform. Um, basically, to train Bus Uncle, I had to give it a few stories in the start. So the first ever thing I trained Bus Uncle with was uh, Bus How Long. So I, I trained Bus Uncle to understand that Bus How Long has the intent of finding bus time. So I had to link it to my code to go to a function called find bus time. And uh, some people might also ask, like, bus 65 at uh, bus stop 04121, how long? I also had to highlight 65 and highlight 04121 and say, this is the bus, this is the bus stop. Those were entities. Um, so in the start, I, had, I specified maybe five to 10 different ways of how a user might talk to a bot. And that, that was actually like good enough in the start. But now I have to keep continually training it uh, at, at random intervals. Yeah. Any more questions? Um, the gentleman in gray, you never introduced yourself. Oh, 
Okay, uh, my name is Taewon Kim, and I'm a student at NUS Ah, uh, okay. Any other questions? Don't have. Uh, okay, so uh, maybe you can give another round of applause to uh, everybody. <laughs> hey guys, anyone need a talk?